Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Rosenberg. Can you tell us about the poster you presented at the Pediatric Academic Society Conference? Sure. The poster we presented at this year's Pediatric Academic Society's conference in Baltimore, Maryland, was called Trends in Autism Spectrum Disorder Diagnosis, uh, 1994-2007. This work is interesting on several levels. So the first is that it is the first published research based exclusively on data collected from the Interactive Autism Network. This is um, the world's largest online autism registry based out of Kennedy Krieger Institute, and we have information on over 10,000 affected children and 20,000 of their family members. So we asked parents, what was your child's first autism diagnosis? And although we can't directly comment on the number of cases per year of autism spectrum disorder, we can say that among the autism spectrum disorders since 1994, there's been a trend in terms of specific diagnoses. For example, while the proportion of children with autistic disorder or classical autism has stayed the same, those the same proportion has actually decreased for those diagnosed with something called PDD-NOS, pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified, while at the same time the proportion of children diagnosed with a more vague term, autism spectrum disorder, has actually increased. As well, we found that a lot of the factors determining the, these trends um, hinge on the initial evaluator. So we found that school-based teams were more likely to use the more vague term of autism spectrum disorder. Um, this helped us conclude that autism spectrum disorder is being used by some evaluators um, for children who may not necessarily be on the spectrum of autism disorders because their screens for autism were actually less likely to be positive. We've also concluded that our current guidelines for diagnosing autism spectrum disorder may not be meeting the needs of all initial evaluators, including school-based teams. Dr. Rosenberg, can you talk a little bit more about the research um, and if there are any other points that you would like to elaborate on? Definitely. We have such a large database that we were able to look at other factors that may be influencing which diagnosis a child initially receives. For example, we found that uh, ethnicity, whether or not a child is Hispanic, affected their initial diagnosis, as well as where a child lives. So children in more metropolitan areas had different trends in diagnosis compared to those children living in more rural areas. And we found similar trends uh, by race and by region. Okay. Ideally, a diagnosis should not matter based on where you live or the color of your skin or what language you speak. For example, we wouldn't expect pneumonia to be diagnosed differently in different places. But these findings are important because uh, they suggest that although autism spectrum disorder is a common diagnosis, unfortunately, affecting one out of 150 uh, American children, the guidelines for diagnosing it do not seem to be as clear-cut and as universally useful as other neuromedical conditions. Dr. Rosenberg, what implications does this research have for future research? Well, the exciting thing is that this research has implications not only for future research, but for clinicians practicing today as well as for families. In terms of research, when uh, other investigators are looking at autism spectrum disorder diagnoses and how they're changing over time, especially in the context of concerns about increasing rates of autism diagnoses, they need to be mindful that many other factors besides a true increase in the actual presence of autism spectrum disorder affect children receiving the diagnosis. This is related to, for example, the fact that school-based teams are using autism spectrum disorder diagnosis when, in fact, a child may not necessarily have that diagnosis, although they may have other problems. So this is uh, important at the clinical and research level because telling a family that they have an autism spectrum disorder affected child certainly has implications for the family and the clinician. This is important when we think about confirming diagnosis and 
families should know that although one evaluator has told them that their child has autism spectrum disorder, the gold standard for diagnosis 